Hey friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use Reaper to parameter motion sequence on the Korg Prolog the same way you can on the Minilog XD. The Prolog is an incredible analog synthesizer, but it lacks the sequencer that its little brother, the Minilog XD has, and therefore its modulation capacity is actually a little limited. Using Reaper, we can control every parameter on the panel here and write automation and motion sequencing just like you can on the Minilog XD. I don't wanna waste any of your time, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new track. And in the Kakos folder, which are the default plugins, we're going to add Rhea insert. So before we can get started, we need to set this up. So we're not gonna send any audio to the prologue. So we're gonna set the hardware sends to none, although they don't really matter. And we're gonna set the MIDI to prologue sound. The hardware returns though, I'm, I've got my prologue just happens to be running into seven and eight on my interface, so I'm gonna select that. And so right now when I start playing, you should be able to hear something, but there, it's delayed. So what we need to do is turn off automatic device latency adjustment and ping the actual synthesizer. So when I hit ping here, it's gonna send an audio signal to determine how many samples it needs to offset. Um, that's good to go now. So I'm going to hit record and I'm going to record MIDI overdub replace and I'm gonna to go to MIDI touch replace. That's probably the best for these settings, although this might work with the um, latch replace too. And I'm going to set the input to um, MIDI and the prologue keyboard knob, not MIDI in. All right, and to all channels is fine. So now I'm able to hear the prologue in real time, and I'm gonna just record a little baseline part here um, using this drum beat I made uh, in Satala. Just like that. What I'm gonna do is open this MIDI file up, and I'm going to uh, quantize it real quick. And this song happens to be uh, with a little bit of a swing beat, so I'm going to quantize it to that. And here, we're, and I'm just copy and paste it. So now we have this loop. When we hit record again, I'll be able to start moving the knobs on the hardware here. And because we're in touch replace, once I've taken my hand off the knob, it won't overwrite the next pass uh, where the knob is written. So it's only writing stuff that I'm moving. So let me show you how that works real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this MIDI item out. That way um, I can record some automation in before the loop begins. And now when I hit record and I start moving the knobs, that'll record into the MIDI item. So I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna start by moving the cutoff here. You can see it's writing it in. And you can see that it drug a little bit out of that. You can see it over edited that a little bit. So I'm just going to um, set the grid to like 64 and then just draw back in the automation that was missed there. And now I could do the same for let's say the filter resonance. Now, if we look over on MIDI CC 44, which happens to be filter resonance, you can see this again, and there's a little bit that got cut off, so we'll just draw that back in like that. And you can see that we could keep doing this with virtually every parameter on the synth. So just as a example, let's keep going for fun. Play with the uh, filter decay. And I'm gonna just look up in the manual here uh, real quick. Oh, CC21. So you can see how it has a little uh, asterisk next to it. So I guess that means that that's been recorded too. 
So again, we could just kind of fix this in a little bit if we wanted so we could see what, what approximately it looks like. This is an incredibly powerful tool you can use to create complex modulation you wouldn't be able to achieve with the prologue on its own. Here's another example of something I came up with, not using any of the modulation on the prologue itself, but just the motion sequencing using Rhea insert in Reaper. Okay, the final result. That's all done without using the filter envelope at all. I know it looks like it's on here, but it's actually not doing anything. And same thing with the LFO. There's no LFO motion or anything in that. That's all controlled just by writing in automation into Reaper. So anyways, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any more questions on the Korg Prolog you'd like me to answer in future videos, please put them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference. And thank you so much for watching.